Now, Barton eat dust homages and quite well at that, however, they also do their own designs and I have to give it to them, all the original design watches that I reviewed so far were really good. Now, this time I have this Barton Sport Vintage Diver here and, well, what can I say, when it comes to build quality, it is top notch and with Barton it is not a surprise, however, the most interesting part about this watch is the details of all those design elements that Barton consolidated together here. Some are obvious and some are not. Hello and welcome back! This is not a particularly new model and I think it has been around for over a year now and it looks like one of those sleeper models that are really good but for some reason don't get enough attention and my guess is that in attempt to give this, in my opinion, truly underrated timepiece more exposure, Baltany offered to send it to me for review and now it is here and I get to keep it. And as usual, I'll do my part and share with you as comprehensive review as I can and also I will point you to Baltany's product listings. So yes, all the links to their product listings will be in the description of this video. So, Baltany took a ship or yacht helm as a design inspiration for this watch, but really we can associate this look with all kinds of maritime forms and navigation tools, even a deep sea dive helmet or a submarine hatch, well, the imagination is the limit. And taking into account the clear 200 meters of water resistance, this watch doesn't just look pretty, but also can be very practical. And it is not just about the shape, of course, it is also about the combination of materials used. We have here a fusion of stainless steel and bronze with a beautiful sapphire crystal on the top. And as we will see, Baltany didn't hold back neither on air coating here nor on the loom on this very attractive dial. And just to expand a little bit on the usage of bronze, bronze is a very interesting material for watchmaking and this particular CUSN8 bronze used here is resistant to corrosion. It is also tough enough for the case construction and of course it has that rose gold color. And one of the interesting properties of bronze is its natural ability to create a protective film or patina which also changes the color. This patina can be easily removed too and this gives us a of course, a very unique looking timepiece. So, if you wanted to experiment with the bronze made watches, but not sure if you wanted to go all in on a fully bronze timepiece, then this Baltany provides a unique opportunity with a few bronze elements on a stainless steel case to see if the bronze is really for you. And I think it is important to make a note about this leather strap. I'll talk about it in detail shortly, however, I must say that it was the first thing that I noticed when I unpacked this watch, how thick, soft and pliable this leather was. Not sure about the longevity, but it is sure a pleasure to handle out of the box. So, we have a 39.5 mm case diameter, case height is 12.9 mm, lug width of 20 mm, maintaining that 1 to 2 ratio with the case and, of course, allowing us to utilize all those spare 20 mm straps here. And lug to lug distance is very manageable, 47 mm, so this watch should work on pretty much most resizes, starting from about 6 inches and up. And the supplied leather strap should comfortably cover wrists up to 8.25 or almost 8.5 half inches or about 21 and a half centimeters in circumference and as supplies this watch weighs 88 grams. Now, another design choice that I appreciate on this watch is the choice of movement. Baltany quite appropriately used Seiko NH38, automatic mechanical movement, which is essentially the same as well-reputable and reliable Seiko NH35, but without a date complication, which makes sense on no-date watch, so we don't have that ghost crown position, which is good. This movement is also hackable, that is, the second hand will stop when we pull the crown out to adjust the time. And and it beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour and it has about 41 hours of power reserve. So, looking at the case, we have a full stainless steel construction combined with a CUSN8 bronze. The stainless steel case has a satin brushing on the top and high polished sides. The sides are nicely curved and slanted downwards by the lugs. And we get some additional creases around the lugs, adding some visual interest as well as creating a smoother flow for a NATO or Zulu style straps. We then have a fixed bronze bezel that also contains 12 inlaid steel balls with a ball at 
12 o'clock being ever so slightly larger. Very interesting design. Also, the integration between the case and the bronze bezel is almost flawless. It looks like bronze melts into the curvy top of the case, and there are almost no detectable gaps. Very interesting how Balteny managed to achieve that effect. We have an unguarded screw-down crown here, which is also made out of bronze and nicely complements the bronze bezel. And I must note that the threading is very smooth, despite having two different metals in contact here – stainless steel on the case side and bronze, of course, on the crown side. Flipping the case over and we have here sterile screw-on back case with circular brushing, and the back of the case is finished in a similar satin brushing as the top of the case, so good attention to detail here from Balcony in making sure that even the areas that are not usually visible are still well finished. And as I mentioned earlier, we have here 200 meters of declared water resistance so this is a very practical timepiece that we can wear while swimming or even skin diving. Ok, I'm yet to see Balcony watch that didn't have impressive sapphire crystal, and this one is not an exception. The crystal is raised and ever so slightly domed. It is double domed, so there is almost no distortions when looking at the dial, and we have a very effective anti-reflective coating here. So the legibility of this very good looking dial is impeccable. And looking at the dial, I think Balcony did a great job here. The dial background has a rich burgundy color with very nicely done sunburst effect, and even in a very dull light, this dial still looks nice and bright. We have minute chaptering printed on the perimeter and a set of hour markers, which are very well covered with loom, as we will see shortly. We have here very minimalistic approach to wording, only brand name above the pinion and automatic below the pinion, so dial definitely doesn't look cluttered. All the elements on the dial, including the pencil-style hands, are done in a similar gilt tone, which works very well with the color of the bronze bezel. And good contrast between the dial elements and the dark burgundy background ensures excellent legibility. And now let's look at the loom. Here is my usual 15-minute test, and I would say we are getting here pretty much diver-level loom. The application is very consistent, and I like that the hands glow as strong or even ever so slightly stronger than the hour indices. Now, as for the bracelet, we have here a very comfortable double-layered leather strap. No breaking in required, it is nice and pliable straight out of the box and is very comfortable on the wrist. We have nicely sculpted and brushed and also signed stainless steel buckle, which complements the stainless steel case. And here is this watch on my about 7-inch wrist. It sits well planted and is very, very comfortable. The only thing that I think we need to be mindful here is how waterproof is this leather strap. My my guess is that it is most likely will not deal with the water exposure very well, so we would probably need to replace it with a rubber strap or a NATO style nylon strap if we are to take this watch swimming. So, price and verdict. Now, this lovely original design timepiece is available from Balcony Official Store for about $165. And for the combination of very interesting design, superb build quality, and well mixed materials, I think it is a very attractive timepiece. What are your thoughts? Well, do let us know in the comments. And if you find this review helpful, of course, do hit that like button and, of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching, take care, and I will see you in the next video.